American Idiot is Green Day's seventh studio album, released at a time when it seemed their popularity was on the wane. Their previous album, Warning, was a disappointment in terms of sales, and the band were determined to come back strong. And come back strong they did, with an epic album showing the band at the peak of their powers. It quickly became a benchmark for the sound of modern rock, and still sounds as fresh today as it did when it was released back in 2004. Green Day's approach to writing American Idiot was both ambitious and experimental. The band aimed to create a punk rock opera, drawing inspiration from classic rock operas like The Who's Tommy and Quadrophenia. This ambition is evident in the album's structure, which features interconnected songs and reoccurring musical motifs. The songwriting process was collaborative, with all the band members contributing to the development of the album's narrative and musical themes. Lyrically, it's clear from the title that it's very politically charged. The post-9-11 landscape in America was very polarised, and the backlash was evident. American Idiot establishes the album's tone by addressing media manipulation and the state of American culture. Musically, the album blends punk rock with elements of pop rock and even Broadway-style theatrics. The album's production is polished, yet retains the energy and edge of Green Day's earlier work. Tracks like Jesus of Suburbia and Homecoming are multi-part epics that showcase the band's versatility and their willingness to push the boundaries of their genre. Before American Idiot was even a concept, they did set about writing demos for an album that was never meant to be. Cigarettes and Valentines was the album that American Idiot could have been, featuring very different songs and a completely different theme. This recording somehow went missing, however, leaving the band in a bit of a situation. Billy Joe said, I've never heard that happening to anybody. It was a bummer for sure. We put a lot of work into it, but at the same time it was a blessing. We were like, let's just start from scratch. Maybe it's just a sign that we made a crappy record, and we should make a better one. When asking about anything from cigarettes making its way to American Idiot, Billy Joe said, There was a lot of stuff on there that were full songs. From the original version of Homecoming, we ended up using a lot of those parts and connected it together, which makes this sort of crazy sweet, as they say. Little else from that album has officially seen the light of day, though. The setback turned out to be a blessing in disguise, as it prompted Green Day to rethink their approach and ultimately led to the creation of American Idiot. At this point, the band relocated to Los Angeles to record the album, working at Ocean Way in Capitol Studios. This change of scenery provided a fresh perspective and allowed the band to fully immerse themselves in the creative process. The recording sessions were intense and focused, with the band members pushing each other to deliver their best performances. One notable story from the recording process involves the song Wake Me Up When September Ends. This deeply personal track was written by Billy Joe about the death of his father. Losing him at only 10 years old inevitably led to a lot of pain and grief throughout his life, and this was channeled into his performance of the song. It's incredibly heartfelt and a definite standout moment on the album, and one of the hit singles taken from it. Billy Joe's guitars for the album were various, but his main go-tos were his Gibson Les Paul Jr. named Floyd and his Les Paul standard. On the Les Paul Junior, Billy Joe remarked, I bought my 1956 Junior in 2000 right before we started recording Warning. I picked it up at a guitar show in San Rafael. I could tell right away it was special. At the time I was playing mostly Fenders, and this Junior was a completely different guitar from anything I'd played before. They sound great. I love Les Paul Juniors. Dog Ear 50s P90s are the punchiest pickups ever made. It's perfect for my style of playing. They are dirty, but have great string definition. Solid body Gibsons are the perfect rock guitars. It's evident from this video, he also used the 335 style electric also. The acoustic guitars he used included the Gill D55, the Taylor 514C, and the Gibson J180 Custom. His amps, of course, played an important part of the sound, and these featured his Marshall Plexi, modded with an extra gain stage for a thicker tone, and a 50 watt Park 75, again modded with an extra gain stage, he also used his Hi Watt 100 and a Fender Tremolux for clean tones. His preferred speakers were the Celestian Vintage 30s and Celestian Greenbacks. The main rhythm guitar sound is a combination of two different guitars and amps, both double tracked, pan left and right. They were recorded using the SM57 and Royal 121. Billy Joe did use a few different effects, but perhaps the most famous was on Boulevard of Broken Dreams, with the rhythmic tremolo sound being created by the Roger Lynn Adrenaline 3. Mike Dirnt's bass rig was his Fender P bass into an Ampeg SVT and sometimes a Fender Bassman. This was recorded with a FET 47 on the cab into a 1073 style preamp with a touch of compression using the Distressor. A DI was also taken through the Avalon U5. This then went to tape and back into Pro Tools. 
Trey Cool's drums, with a Ludwig Classic Maple, sporting large toms, 14 and 16 inch rack toms, and an 18 inch four tom. They were recorded in the fantastic space of Studio B at Ocean Way, so the natural ambience has a lot of depth to the sound. The primary mics were the FET 47 on the kick, SM57 on the snare, and the overheads were a pair of Telefunken 251s in cardioid pattern. They were recorded directly to tape and then transferred back to Pro Tools. Here are the drums in isolation to hear the fantastic ambience from the studio. The recording process was unusual in the fact that each song was recorded in its entirety before moving on to the next. It took 10 months to record at a cost of $650,000, and Billy Joe admitted to a fair amount of partying that interspersed the recording. In fact, quite a few sessions had to be scheduled around his frequent hangovers. He said, for the first time, we fully accepted the fact we were rock stars. Despite this approach, they felt deliriously happy on completing the recording and really felt they were on the cusp of something big. Once the recording was complete, everything was then handed over to Chris Lord Algae for mixing on his SSL 4K console. It's reported he used samples to augment the drums, but it has been refuted. The fantastic recording coupled with a great mix served to be a great reference point for any rock records made at the time, and probably still today. Upon its release, the album received widespread critical acclaim and commercial success. It went straight in at number one on the Billboard Top 200 chart and went on to sell over 16 million copies worldwide. Critics praised the album's ambitious scope, powerful lyrics and innovative approach to punk rock. The reaction from fans was equally enthusiastic. American Idiot resonated with a generation of listeners who were grappling with the political and social issues of the time and its anthemic songs become a rallying cry for those seeking change. Its success also had a significant impact on Green Day's career. The album revitalised the band's popularity. It earned them several awards, including a Grammy for Best Rock Album, and solidified their status as still one of the best rock bands out there. Billy Joe said, Every band wants to have a Sgt Pepper type of moment, and American Idiot was that moment for us. Two decades after its release, it still remains a defining work in Green Day's discography, and its life continued well after its release, with the album's concept of being a musical came full circle, when the stage show of American Idiot premiered in September 2009, also being a success. Its legacy is a testament to Green Day's ability to capture the zeitgeist and create music that resonates on a deep emotional level. Really not bad for a three-piece punk band. <laughs>